guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Hannah and I'm here today to share a new video with you which is going to be the February instalment of Books on Your Radar. I never quite get the name right. Also going to put a disclaimer at the top of this video. If you want this you will find my voice annoying anyway. It's going to be even more annoying today because I've got like three ulcers under my lip and they're making me sort of speak in a funny way so apologies for that but I didn't want to leave this any longer because there's loads of books I'm excited for. Um, as I said in previous videos this is not a video to say I'm going to buy all these books or even read all of these books immediately. Some of them I have as proof, some of them I'm waiting for more reviews and others um, I'm just sharing because I feel like people who like the books I like might also like these even if I'm not going to read them straight away so yeah this is not a directive to go out and buy lots of books just merely showing you what's coming out and what's new. So let's start with the book I am so excited for. Sorry if you can hear the noise in the background <laughs> or some rapping something. Um, and that is The Swimmers by Julie Otsuku. So Julie Otsuku wrote Buddha in the Attic, which is like one of my favourite books I read last year or the... No, not last year. It must have been 2020 or 2019, um, which is a story of... Um, oh, sorry. Of Japanese migrants to the USA and it's told in the collective we. And I actually have the second book of that that's Tom's, which is called when the emperor was divine which i'm going to read i put it on my like immediate tbr stack because i want to read that before i read this new one by her because that one is a sequel to the buddha and attic the swimmers however is set somewhere entirely different so this says alice is one of the groups of obsessed recreational swimmers for whom their local swimming pool is the center of their lives a place of unexpected kinship freedom and ritual until one day a crack beneath the surface appears this crack arrives in Alice's memory too. She's faced the dilemma of how best to care for her. She clings to the tethers of her past of home. It's certain it's not her home and her family try and navigate their new relationship. So I think this is going to be a lot about memory. I've got a feeling the protagonist is older, so it's going to be about maybe dementia or memory loss in later life. And it says a novel of grief and memory, love and Im irreplaceable loss. Obviously it's set at a swimming pool. You guys know I love to swim so it seems like it's going to be a bit for me and it also fits into my like want to read a bit more weird stuff because the crack at the bottom of the swimming pool I'm not sure that's going to be more fantastical or just a maintenance issue but it sounds like it might be fantastical. I actually have a proof of this sitting in my mum's um, house ready for me to pick up soon so that is my first pick. Oh did I say it's out on the 24th of February and I'll definitely vlog me reading that one. The next one is A Very Nice Girl by Imogen Crimp. I've seen this one around a lot as like um, hype building for the proofs and stuff. So this is published by Bloomsbury and it's out on the 3rd of February. So really quite soon. And um, it's a coming of age story, depressed women moving, maybe. It says Anna's struggling to afford life in London while training to be a singer. During the day, she buys to succeed against her classmates. And in the evening, she sings jazz in a bar in the city to make ends meet. And then she meets Max, a financier, 14 years older. And over the course of one winter, she becomes intoxicated. She zips herself into the skin of these new characters and spends nights with Max in his glass walled flat overlooking his city. But her career demands her attention, but so does Max. So this sounds like it might be kind of like... Um, Acts of Desperation, maybe, Paul, that kind of like tumultuous, not necessarily fully um, on board relationship. It says it's blurbed as sweet, bitter meets normal people, which is kind of random, but um, I did like both of those books as well. It's blurbed also by Meg Mason and, you know, I loved Sorrow and Bliss. So this sounds like it might be quite interesting. I've heard people say it wasn't what they expected when they reviewed it so I'm not sure if that it's the blurb that doesn't live up to what they thought or if it's the um what they thought going in was not what they wanted but the blurb does explain it if you know what I mean. This is another one I have actually on NetGalley so I will be reading that. Okay another like woman coming of age young millennial story is What a Shame by Abigail Ber Bergstrom. She is a literary agent I think by profession and runs Bergstrom Studios and previously have worked for like some quite high up in a lot of publishing houses but this is her first piece of fiction. I've also seen this get quite mixed reviews this is also out on the 3rd of February so for fans of Emma James Unsworth, Jolly Olsen, Holly Bourne um, 
There's something wrong with Matilda. She's reeling from a gut punch of a breakup and grieving with the death of a loved one, but that's not it. She's cried all her tears and mastered the crow pose and thrown out every reminder of him, but that's not helping either. Concerned she isn't moving on, Matilda's friends put her towards a serious series of unorthodox remedies. Wow, my words are not coming to me today. Until the seams of her begin to undone, begin to come undone. So this sounds like a, yeah, definitely a depressed woman moving, woman in um, in a breakup, trying to deal with new singleton. Yeah, sounds interesting. I'm not sure, like the reviews I would say have been mixed, but I'll be interested to read it even in a critical sense. Okay, then I thought I'd throw in some non-fiction here just because um, lots of people seem to like that and say that it's hard to find good non-fiction recommendations that are like coming up. So this is a, okay, from Bloomsbury, we've got Sexual Revolution, Modern Fascism and the Feminist Fight Back by Laurie Penny. And this comes out on the third. So this is a piece of non-fiction, I think quite short, if I remember, uh, about the sexual revolution. The front cover says, this is a story about how modern masculinity is killing the world and how feminism can save it. It's a story of sex and power and trauma and resistance and persistence. And at the heart of this story is a simple idea. We are in the middle of a sexual revolution. So if you have watched my previous videos, you know I recently read The Right to Sex and was talking about that with Jalen. I did a video with him about it, which I will link upstairs or downstairs. Um, and we were talking about like also the rise of these kinds of books and sort of like the marketization of them as polemics or manifestos and how that really um how that really works and m maybe if they are occasionally um heralded as uh books that are revolutionary and perhaps they are not i'm not sure the background of the author to tell you whether or not she's writing from like an academic standpoint or if she is like more of a journalist but yeah it does sound really interesting and it's i think going to touch on lots of the things i've read on before and that I'm interested in when it comes to modern feminism, like incel culture, the rise of the online, like the alt-right, all those kind of conversations. So yeah, sounds interesting. Okay, then from Fitzcarraldo, we have Cold Enough for Snow. I have a proof of this. I'm really excited to read it. So this one, the um, Fitzcarraldo New Directions, and there's an Australian publisher, they run like a joint novel prize every year. And this is this year's winner. And it is a short novella, 104 pages, telling the story of a mother and daughter who travel to Japan to meet up. And it says it deals with family, distance and memory with uncertainties abound. Who is speaking? Is it only the daughter? And what is the reason behind this? Are they on a spectacle journey? At once a careful reckoning and an elegy. Cold Enough for Snow questions whether we all speak a common language at all. I love whatever Fitzcarraldo put out. I feel like they they really cultivate these writers that are precise in their language and really playful in the way that they write and are telling, you know, more than just the story. So I'm really excited to see what this one does, particularly it being so short. So I would definitely wrap that up in February for you. And the second one out with Fitzcarraldo is a piece of their non-fiction. So it's got the infamous white cover and um, this sounds brilliant the naked do not fear the water a journey through the refugee underground so this um documents the stories of afghanistan refugees as they flee their country and it says in 2016 a young afghan driver and translator named omar made the heart-wrenching choice to flee his country and say goodbye to the love of his life without knowing when he might be reunited again he is one of the millions of refugees that have left their home and this journalist living in kabul follows their story and his friend so yeah, I think this is like a collection, a chorus of all the different voices of people who fled Afghanistan and all the different ways that their lives were upended. And I guess contributing to all of that rhetoric against all of that rhetoric that we have about, you know, faceless refugees or people, the monolithic nature of people who flee. So, so it's a tale of love and friendship and borders and an inquiry into our shared journey of division. Sounds brilliant as, and again, I really trust Fitzcarraldo, so I'm sure it will be done with finesse. Okay, then by Adam Rutherford, who wrote How to Argue with the Racist, which I haven't written, he comes out um, anti-racism work from a science point of view, and this is his new book, Control, The Dark History and Troubling Present of Eugenics. Does what it's going to say on the tin, traces the history of eugenics. It says it looks at the way it was embraced in dozens of countries, it was a cornerstone of Nazi ideology and the legacy of eugenics present, persists in our language and literature from the word moron to imbecile and the themes of some of our greatest works of culture today. 
Today, with new gene editing techniques and real conversations happening, including in the heart of the British government, about how tinkering with DNA of our unborn children to make them smarter, fitter and stronger. Super interested in this, even though he comes from a background talking about um, these kind of issues through a uh, racial lens. It sounds like he's going to touch a lot on... Uh, um, disability justice in terms of the way that DNA editing and early testing and all these things are coming to light that people are doing particularly in different countries about how they test their unborn children to find out if they have disabilities and or this idea of like building a child through genes and stuff which is really terrifying to me but I think this will be yeah really brilliant. Okay, then out with Daunt Book Publishing, another indie publisher I love. Um, this just says it's out in February, and this is Please Miss a Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Penis by Grace Lovery. And I also have a proof of this. It's defined as a memoir of transition and um, recovery from addiction. And I did speak about this in a previous video, so I'll just briefly go over it. I think it's a blend of commentary on trans identity and then looking a lot at like historical and present day queer pop culture and like blending those two things together and it sounds like it's going to look at um yeah personal experience and then like wider commentary so it says grace performs in a david lynch remake of sunset boulevard and is reprogrammed as a 1960s fembot she's targeted with anonymous letters for a mystery group of clowns and she writes a social mani a socialist manifesto disguised as a porn parody of QI or is it vice versa she tumbles towards her new trans identity and tries on lots of different voices creating a color a coat of many colors it's blurbed by Tori Peters Maggie Nelson and Carmen Maria Machado so yeah I'm super excited to dig into like a really fun but interesting and sounds like it's gonna be quite experimental memoir okay and then I've got a book out by a tiny press which is the University of Nebraska um, press and this is Animal Bodies on Death, Desire and Other Difficulties by Suzanne Roberts. I actually just saw this on NetGalley and just requested it because I love the cover and I think it sounds like it might be quite interesting um, particularly on my theme of like reading about grief a lot recently and continue to do so this year. This is How Do We Reckon With Our Losses? Suzanne Roberts explores the link between death and desire and what it means to accept our animal nature, the parts of which we hide or deny or consider with shame. In landscapes as diverse as Salamanca's cobbled streets or the Mekong River's floating markets, Fire Island's windswept beaches and the Sierra Nevada's snow snowy slopes. <laughs> Say that three times first. Um, Robert interrogates memories to try and make sense of her own private losses and the public losses including a mass shooting in her hometown and the environmental disaster of the Amazon. So yeah, sounds like a really interesting way to think about grief. I like the idea of like public versus private loss. And I think it's a collection of essays, I believe. Yeah, pa yeah. And it says it's darkly funny as well. So it could be interesting. As I mentioned in another video, I'm really into weird, like, weird niche nonfiction. And I feel like that might fit into that brief quite well. Okay, a book that's getting loads of hype already. I know it was like featured maybe in the Sunday Times because my mum sent me a photo saying, have you heard about this book? Should I order it? <laughs> and that's Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellors. I think I prefer the US cover than this cover. Not sure. I do quite like the font of this one. Um, and this again is a story of a young woman in a troubling relationship i think it's set in new york so it says cleo new york is slipping from cleo's grasp her student visa is running out but she meets frank who's 20 years older and his life is full of success he offers her the chance to be happy he's everything she needs right now and they run head first into romance that neither of them can quite keep up with cleo's best friend is struggling to embrace his gender identity in the wake of her marriage or Frank's financially dependent sister arranging sugar daddy dates before being cut off. Ultimately, a chance meeting outside two strangers changes anything for better or worse. Yeah, I think this sounds quite interesting. I'm not sure if I will be like, not over it, but I'm trying to limit or like spread out my reading of these kinds of books because I think the more you read like back to back, particularly you can get a bit burnt out of the topic and feel like you've heard it all before, even if the book is offering something new. So I'm not sure when I will read this. I do have a net galley arc of it um, and it's out on the 8th of February. So maybe soon, who knows? I think it definitely will be one that I like read quickly, if not, like even if I don't fully enjoy it.
Okay, another piece of non-fiction is Might Bite, The Secret Life of a Gambling Addict by Patrick Foster. Fun fact about me, I'm really interested in gambling addiction. Um, so this follows Patrick Foster, it's a memoir of his 12 years he spent with a gambling addiction. He was a sociable young teacher and a former professional cricketer. He had a girlfriend and a family but was hiding his habit. Um, and it's about his experience with gambling addiction that, would, that led to a suicide attempt and he... Um, ended up gambling like £58,000 on one horse that he lost at Cheltenham and he watched the race in his classroom while his kids undertook a mock exam. Uh, yeah, I think this is really interesting and it says I think it's going to touch, at least in a personal perspective, on the gambling industry in the UK, which is really, really awful. And I know the same in the US, like it's there's a lot of campaigns going on for people to try and tighter regulations on gambling the removal of advertisements relating to gambling and just way better restrictions because there is a lot of people it says gambling addiction affects more than 1.4 million people every year in the uk so it's not a small problem and yeah i have family members who gamble not in an addictive sense but are um, like big into betting so i think this would also be an interesting perspective in that case as well Okay, and then a fun romp that I'm excited for. I really like this cover because I love the cat on it. And this is the Family Chow. This is out on the 3rd of February with Pushkin. And it's set in small town Wisconsin. And it says it follows um, the Chow family who run a the most popular restaurant in town. And it says the, the tyrann tyrannical patriarch Big Leo Chow is found frozen to death in the family's meat freezer. And the scandalous events forced to... Turn the community's attention to the three Chow sons. The heir to the business, the accomplished lawyer and the naive college student all learn about their past. And the family dog disappears and the youngest son is put on trial of his father's murder. So the tumbling, turbulent history tumbles out to the public eye. So yeah, I feel like this sounds quite good, like a bit court casey, a bit drama and also like small town context and uh, a group of uh, non-white like family protagonists. So yeah, sounds really interesting. I think it's one my mum might like as well so maybe I'll pick that up for her soon. Okay one I've seen so many brilliant reviews for already and that is Out of the Sun and the byline is Essays at the, cross at the Crossroads of Race so this unpicks lots of different representation of blackness in art and pop culture it says it looks at Afrofuturism, Western art, racial passing and being the daughter of Ghanaian immigrants in five different essays. History is a construct so what does it mean when we bring stories consigned to the margins up to the light? I've heard this is really poetic and really well written and yeah just really brilliant um personal essays blended with uh, cultural criticism definitely one I will be looking out for on audio I think okay then a little bit of a thriller that I saw and I was only made aware of this because I followed the publicist for Influx Press on Instagram um, and this is a door behind a door so yeah like I said out with Influx which is like a cool indie press in the UK and this is also set in Wisconsin that's funny um so it says Olga receives a phone call from a man she thought she'd never hear from again. Her life has changed since to get their time together in the Soviet Union. She stepped down, had a child, but this phone call aunt, this phone call opens Pandora's box for haunting memories and unsolved puzzles. You guys know I read Dog Park at the start, the end of last year, and um, I really liked that, and that was all about the Ukraine and post-Soviet politics and reproductive health and it was like quite fast paced part of it set like on the run and I think this sounds like it might be kind of like that the cover is screaming like thriller to me but um yeah I like the idea of it um the context it says it explores post-Soviet di diaspora through mes mesmeric blending of past and present desire and violence yeah I might pick that up for when I go on a holiday I feel like that might be a good airplane read or like train read Okay, one, I'm super excited for to get on audio. I hope it comes out um, quickly. And this is Burning My Roti, or Roti, um, Breaking Barriers as a Queer Indian Woman. Love this cover. So this is part memoir, part guidebook to essential reading for the next generation of South Asian women. Covers sexual and cultural identity, body hair, colorism, mental health, but focuses on the suffocating beauty standards that South Asian women are set to adhere to. It follows the journey of our author, attempting to love themselves, offer advice and support and comfort for people experiencing these issues. A provocative book that ce celebrates, the stride, celebrates the strides South Asian women have come for and powerful advice about what they will do next. Yeah, I just think this sounds brilliant and I haven't read a book about um, queer South Asian women. I did actually go to a talk at 
um, Women of the World Festival a year or two back um, on a board of LGBTQ plus South Asian people, which was really enlightening. So I'm hoping I will learn a lot from this one as well. Okay, Run and Hide. This is out on the 24th of February. Does a video about February. And this is a book, another sort of, I think, on the run book. It says it said financial scandal and that's what sold me so it says Aaron knows there's only one way out of this railway town he's about to enroll in the prestigious Indian Institute of Technology to make a name for himself but he goes to unimaginable lengths to succeed in just a few years his friends become the success stories of their generation plane rides in expensive cars and play out their Gatsby fantasies but in reality someone must pay for these transitions will it be Aaron or will it be Alia a female writer and influencer who's piecing together this story of global financial scandal. A group of friends on the run through an age of upheaval and breakdown of story for the times. Ooh, I think that sounds good, like drama filled. 336 pages. Um, a romp, perhaps. Yeah, set in India. And then I think part of it moves like, yeah, through travel. I don't know, just really appealed to me, I think. So <laughs> looking out for that one. To make sure that I'm including lots of indie books in these um, roundups as well. Though it does seem harder, at least I'm finding it harder to find full catalogue lists. And obviously indie publishers put out less books a year. That's part of what makes them independent. Um, and lots of them don't tend to come out until like March, April time. Anyway, the final book I have to talk about, which definitely needs no introduction, and I have a proof of a note, which I don't know why I've been sitting on for so long. I think it's out on the 15th of April. I think it's doing a dual release like USA and UK and that is Pure Colour by Sheila Hetty. I don't know what to say. I love Motherhood. I loved it so much. I read it on a flight like, I don't know, two years ago, three years ago. I got the copy out of the library and have since bought my own copy because I loved it so much. But this sounds like going to be quite meta and weird. Describes the contemporary Bible. An atlas of feelings and absurdity. Uh, absurdity. A funny guide to the galaxy and all the things about being alive. She is a philosopher of modern experience and has reimagined what a book could be. I don't think I need to know anymore, to be honest. Um, I would definitely try and vlog, if not give you a long length review, or maybe sit down with Jay and talk about this one, because I think it's definitely a book lots of people will be interested in. Anyway, that is all the books on my radar to give to you for this February. Let me know if there's any books you have coming out in February that you're excited to read. And I will see you guys in the next one. I would love it if you liked, subscribed, did all of those stuff. My Instagram is linked down below and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye. Bye.